Conservative Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema has poured cold water on the Democrats reconciliation infrastructure bill, the $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill that includes everything that is supposed to be the Democrats agenda or on the Democrats agenda. Funding for child care, funding for elder care, the human infrastructure, the climate action, all of the goodies she is against. She's saying that it costs too much money. I mean, I'm sure it has nothing to do with her corporate donors who hate the robust reconciliation version of the infrastructure bill. She says the following, while I support beginning this process, she says, I do not support a bill that costs $3.5 trillion. And in the coming months, I will work in good faith to develop this legislation with my colleagues and the administration. Now, we should also be aware of the fact that Senator Sinema is the same Democratic senator who decided to tap Mitch McConnell's shoulder, a Republican, the former Senate Majority Leader, before she voted down, gave a thumbs down to a $15 an hour minimum wage. Well, turns out that she certainly is seeking validation for Mitch McConnell, and Mitch McConnell has responded to her recent statement regarding the $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill, saying, I was certainly pleased, she's very courageous. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I'm sure Cinema is very happy that Mitch McConnell is, is you know, patting her head and telling her she's being a good girl. Good girl doing the bidding of corporate donors and the Republican Party. Now, uh, the good news is though, Jenk, progressives are planning to fight back. I'll give you the details on that, but first some thoughts on Cinema. Yeah, so guys, the most important thing here is that it, these two bills, uh, the bi, so-called bipartisan bill that spends about half a trillion dollars in new money, Versus the reconciliation bill, the Democratic bill that spends three and a half trillion. That's the real bill, right? It's this has always been a trap. So uh, the Republicans and corporate Democrats had always planned to pass only the bipartisan tiny bill, and in fact they loaded it up with corporate giveaways, yes. including the fossil fuel industry, right? So it's it's an ambush, and so the trick is oh. Progressives and electorate, which is we know is progressive, even though the media and we pretend they're not. We are going to do these wonderful things that you guys love, and it will bring you many jobs, and it will help the environment, etc. Wink. And then, no, they're gonna pull the football every like they do every time. So they're gonna pass the bipartisan bill, and then go. Oh, we tried so hard for the reconciliation bill, the one that the Democrats and progressives wanted. But golly gee, we just couldn't do it. Kristen Cinema wouldn't vote for it. By the way, rotating villains. If it's not Kristen Cinema, it'd be Joe Manchin. If it's not Joe Manchin, it'll be Chris Coons. It doesn't matter because yep. they never meant it. They never planned to pass it. I mean, we saw it from a mile away. And you know what? We never give ourselves credit. I'm going to give us credit, right? The second they decided to do, to split the infrastructure bill into two bills, right? Oh, no, no. We'll go ahead and include everything that Republicans want and corporate Democrats want in the bipartisan bill. And then afterwards, I pro we promise, we swear through reconciliation, we're gonna pass the $3.5 trillion bill. No, they were never planning on doing that. I think that there are some Democratic senators who you know might have been suspicious, but genuinely thought, no, we'll fight and we'll get the, the actual more robust bill passed. But you're right, you have Mansion, you have Cinema, you have Coons, you have Warner. I mean, the rotating villains continue, and you know we were just talking about Joe Manchin standing in the way of the 3.5 trillion dollar infrastructure bill just yesterday, and today it's it's Cinema. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? But it's becoming increasingly unlikely that we're going to get a good infrastructure deal based on the nonsense that's going on with these corrupt corporate Democrats. Look, we have a petition. Um, and so I, I get it that it, it, since there's two bills, it sounds a little confusing, but it isn't. If they vote for the um, bipartisan bill first, we're screwed because they're never gonna pass a larger bill, okay? I guarantee you, you could write it down in stone. I, I mean, whatever bet I could make, I would make on it. It's a, I've seen that lie a thousand times in covering politics for the last quarter of a century, right? So progressives in the House, and we're asking all Democrats in the House, do not vote on the bipartisan bill before you vote on the actual reconciliation bill. Yep. So you've got to vote on the reconciliation bill, the real bill, the Democratic bill, the three and a half trillion dollar bill first. Otherwise, it's an ambush 
There's no question about it, right? So we're asking you to participate in that petition. Go to tyt.com slash petitions. We'll have the link down below if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. And 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 so you can read the whole explanation of it on tyt.com slash petitions slash infrastructure vote, okay? So here the order of the voting makes the biggest difference. Yes. If they pass the terrible one first, we're done. They've gotta pass the good one first. Now we have great news for you guys. This time, progressives are fighting back. So Anna, tell yeah. us about that. So usually when it appears like they might fight back, you'll get a random tweet here or there where they're like hinting that they're thinking about fighting back. But in this case, there's a united front, which I think is important. And remember, the head of the House Progressive Caucus is Pramila Jayapal, and she released a statement. Pramila Jayapal said that votes of caucus members are not guaranteed on any bipartisan package until we examine the details and until the reconciliation bill is agreed to and passed with our priorities sufficiently funded. Following that statement, you have several Democrats Democratic lawmakers coming out and agreeing with it. Mondaire Jones is an example. Without a reconciliation package that meets this moment, I'm a no on this bipartisan deal. You have Rashida Tlaib who called Cinema out by name, and I love to see it. She says Cinema seems not to care that her own state is flooding, the West is burning, and infrastructure around the country is crumbling. Cinema is more interested in gaining GOP friends and blocking much needed resources than fighting for her residents' future. I love that, and she also said that it's time for the White House to play hardball. We didn't elect Cinema as president, and we won't let her obstruction put a Republican in the Oval Office in 2024. It's a reconciliation bill or GOP controlling every level of government again, period. And I think that she's right on that. I'm gonna keep going, just two more tweets. We have Jamal Bowman who says, we were sent to Congress to transform lives. If the Senate fails to support a reconciliation package that meets the moment on climate and our care economy, I can't see myself supporting their goal of passing a bipartisan package for infrastructure. And final one comes from AOC who says, good luck tanking your own party's investment on childcare, climate, climate action and infrastructure while presuming you'll survive a three vote house margin, especially after choosing to exclude members of color from negotiations and calling that a bipartisan accomplishment. And remember, Kirsten Cinema led the effort along with Republican Senator Rob Portman on the bipartisan infrastructure deal. So she wants to make sure that that passes. And I love that these lawmakers, progressive lawmakers are calling her out and saying, no, no, we're not gonna let you succeed in this bipartisan deal until we get what we wanted the reconciliation deal. So I want to give particular credit to a couple people here for specific reasons. So AOC said that about cinema's actions. So she, along with Talib, deserves credit for calling out a Democratic colleague. You might think that that's normal. Of course, they're going to vote against your priority and might kill any action on climate change. Why wouldn't they call them out? But in in Washington, if you don't know if you're new to politics, in Washington, a Democrat calling out another Democrat is the biggest crime. It's like insulting a police officer. It's not in any rule book, but if you do it, it's a third rail and everybody collapses in on you. The corporate Democrats, Democratic leadership, corporate media, they all voraciously attack you, right? So this is the first time that I've seen it happening in in real movement, enough numbers to make a difference on the vote in the House. So I'm actually, I don't know Mondaire Jones at all. We've helped a lot of progressives win, but Honestly, we, we, we haven't had any contact with Mondaire Jones. So I'm gonna tell you in, a compl- in the most unbiased way you can imagine, Mondaire had the best tweet, okay? Because his says, no, I'm voting no on the bill. Yeah. So that's the only thing that matters. We can huff and we can puff, and but that matters too, don't get me wrong. Calling out other de- Democrats matters in terms of putting the spotlight on the issue and creating pressure, yep. right? But at the end of the day, you either vote yes or you vote no. So he's clearly on the record saying, no, I'm gonna vote no on your bill unless we vote on our bill first. That's exactly what we're asking of politicians. By the way, send this petition to those politicians, not just to the progressives, but yes, also to them. But to the corporate Democrats, it says no House Democrat should vote for the bipartisan bill before the reconciliation bill. So credit to Mondaire Jones for doing the right thing and in the right way, Mm -hmm. okay? 
And guys, as AOC pointed out, you really don't need a lot of votes in the House at all. And I wanna give you one more piece of context here. Look, when progressives didn't do what we were hoping for in the $15 minimum wage fight, when it was a winnable fight, it wasn't a fantasy, it wasn't like weird time thing for theatrics, right? It was real, we could have won on $15 minimum wage. And they didn't, they didn't fight on that, okay? And I called them out and I burned a lot of bridges calling them out, okay? On this one, they are doing the right thing. So when they're not doing the right thing, it is right to criticize. When they are doing the right thing, it's right to support. See, that is called using your mind and your human judgment to be able to discern between different situations. And in this situation, they're saying all the right things and they're saying that they're going to act on that. So great, and go get their back, but send them the petition anyway. We, we want them on the record. If they say yes, I'm signing the petition as a congressperson, trust me, that'll make gigantic news. That'll affect the negotiations, and most importantly, it'll affect what passes. Because either that infrastructure bill with the climate change and the jobs passes or it doesn't, and that's the most important thing of all. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.